Today on Stills Farm, we go down to the paint booth where Jason is spraying out the COE frame. Then he rolls in the body, and we finally get to check out what COE body he's doing. Got a little bit of primer left. I think we're going to either going to put some on the t plug. Then back to the shop to figure out what motor we're going to use today on Stills Farm. Hey guys, welcome to Stills Farm. Thanks for joining us. Today we're going to paint the frame of the COE and a couple other little projects going on. We're also going to start something a little new. So before we head down to the paint shop, my new buddy Gary Chi with Car Dreams and Styrene. That's his channel right there. You can get in the link. It's in the description. Check him out. He's a really cool guy. Awesome to talk to. He's been giving me all kinds of tips. You gotta look at his channel. Make sure you add him. Make sure you like all his videos if you like them. Man, he, he does some cool stuff. Uh, he's a model car car enthusiast just like I am. Definitely got his own flavor and his, his own deal on a TV show. And I like it a lot. So, I've been asking him some questions here back and forth. been talking back and forth. Really cool guy. So, like I said, go to his YouTube channel. Check him out. See what you think. But, what he does... He actually has a riddle for every one of his episodes, and he, he posts a new video every Saturday. And he, he's a lot better than I am, uh, he, even though about, we've been doing this about the same amount of time frame. He, he is consistent every Saturday doing stuff. He's got several videos, lots of how-tos, and just really cool videos. You should check him out. He has a riddle at the very beginning of every episode he does, every week, and at the end, He'll tell you what the riddle is and to see if you guess it or not, you know, a such thing like that. So what we're going to do, I don't want to steal his idea. That's that's very unprofessional. I love what he does. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the background music. It's going to be a uh, 80s, early 90s hot rod enthusiast uh, movie. So we're going to see if y'all can guess it. This week, we've already started. You can hear that background music right there? Hear it? All right. Let's head down to the airbrush paint booth, and we're going to start painting some frame. I take my gun with no paint in it, and I do all the strokes like I'm going to do when I'm doing the paint. Make sure there's no holes going to hit the paint booth or the frame. Now that it's all loaded up, I start applying my thin coats. It's okay to put a whole bunch of thin coats on. You don't want to run this. There's no way you can buff us out of a frame as small as this is, so you want to make every coat count. Nice, thin, even coats. Get up underneath every nook and cranny, underneath the rear end housing, underneath the front eye beam, inside the frame. This Lazy Susan really makes it good, because you can mount the frame right to that little clip and rotate it around and get every little nook and cranny wherever you need to go. If you got it on the clip, you take the clip right off in your hand like that, flip the frame upside down, start spraying underneath it. Remember, nice thin coats. Now it's done, we'll let it sit here dry. Now time to see the COE. Got the new 1934 GMC body from Jimmy Flintstone. This is what we're going to be using for our COE build. Got it set up on the rotisserie here. I'm going to start applying thin coats of primer. This is a Models Master brand. It's a gray primer and it's also lacquer. Lacquer is good for model cars. It doesn't have a lot of solvents like a reducer or paint thinner. So it won't affect the resin body. I've used actual automotive that we use in our body shop every day, primer, and it likes to re react on the resin and actually eat into the resin. Thin coats, just like when you airbrush. I will apply three thin coats evenly across this to give us a good platform to do all of our filler work to make this body just right.
Jimmy Flintstone body also has a GMC grill. It actually has GMC imprint in the grill. So we're gonna primer that. That way our color matches when we shoot the grill clear to the body. It really doesn't need any body work whatsoever. We'll just sand the primer nice and straight. One thin coat we apply to this grill. We really don't want to fill in the GMC logo, but we want it covered. So one thin coat across evenly will be just fine. Little old T-Bucket sitting in the shop. Well, it's a little long, so I thought while I had the primer can out, I'll stick it on the rotisserie, and I'll put me an even couple coats on this, just so it looks good sitting in the shop. So when I do get ready to do the body work, it'll be ready. Also, while I had the drive train out, painting the frame, I already had the airbrush gun out, so I thought I'd mix up some silver, and I'd start painting the wheels. Right now, we're gonna paint them silver, I think later on we're going to try some of that chrome ink from Hobby Lobby. You can actually unscrew the cap off of one of them pins and put it in an airbrush gun. So maybe in a future video we'll go back over these wheels and see if we can make them chrome. Hey guys, welcome back. What do y'all think of the new COE body? Pretty cool, huh? That's a 1934 GMC cab over body. Not really stretched out much, that's, that's pretty much exactly how in 34 that would be. But pretty cool little bike. So I got that from Jimmy Flintstone. Right there is the link right there. Awesome guy. Awesome, awesome. Fast shipping every time. Never had any problems. Always takes care of me. He always does. But you can look at that link. The link's in the description. Pretty cool. He, he also does some figures. And he don't just do hot rods. He does classics and customs. Uh, the COE is actually a fantasy body. You have to modify the body a little bit in your frame and actually build a frame. Uh, we're modifying the COE frame from the Dodge L700 kit. Uh, it's not going to be a whole lot of work, but the, the front two, probably the front two inches of real life inches is actually going to have to be cut off that frame to get that body to fit on there. I wanted to go ahead and finish out the frame and paint and all that, just like you would in real life. Uh, a lot of times you order frames from big custom shops and stuff, and the frame will come already pre pre powder coated, and you might have a motor that wasn't exactly what they wanted you to put it in. So you're you're usually having to go back and do a little bit of touch up paint work. Uh, in this case, you know we got to probably in real life cut off about two foot of the frame rails, but hey. Everybody's application is a lot different, especially in a project like this. It is a model car, but people do this in real life. Uh, I translate a lot of this into real life or vice versa if I don't, you know, definitely don't have, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to do a project like, project like this. But you come in the model car world and you start building your dream. So, like I said, at the Jimmy Flintstone uh, 34 GMC cab over COE body, it's pretty awesome body pretty clean uh here it is right here actually it actually does come with the grill like i showed you in the video the grill right now is in primer we're probably actually going to chrome it uh we're going to end up using some of them chrome ink pens from hobby lobby but uh stay tuned on that uh i right now i'm gonna surprise you with the color i'm not gonna tell you uh it was probably going to get repainted in, in future videos but we're going to go ahead and build this screen it all put together, get the motor in it, get the body on it, and get it done, and ha have it a, uh, a true done model car, but in future builds, future projects, uh, future videos, it may get painted uh, to match a car or a truck, or, or I mean, we may just paint it to make another video, but we'll have, to, we'll have to see that when that comes, but now, now it's time to talk about the motor. The motor is not going to be the factory one. I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do here. I think I'm going to use a 6.2 LS9 motor that I've molded and casted. I'm going to start selling them probably pretty soon too. Uh, and, and then a very wild application. Uh, we're going to put the Corvette intake and stuff on it and the cover on top. And we may even modify the cover instead of saying Corvette. It may say something else. The 6.2 verse 
the factory gasoline 361 cubic inch is what actually came out in the Dodge. Uh, there's a pretty big difference. The LS962 that we're going to be putting in here has 638 horsepower that we got there on that chart. And 604 foot-pounds of torque. That is some power. The factory little old 361 cubic inch was a V8, but it only had 295 horsepower with 390 foot-pounds of torque. If they built this as a big rig and pulled this big flatbed trailer that we're going to put back together and, and build, if it pulled all that, this 6.2, 638 horsepower motor is going to do a whole hell of a lot better than what that little 361 put out. So we're going to build that up. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do it really professional with uh, a, a custom intake tube going off to the side of the frame where the, where the box is and we're going to plumb it and wire it the same way with this frame. I haven't really told anybody but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this frame pretty top notch. It's going to have the hard lines for the brakes and the hard lines for the air for the air brakes and an air tank and an air compressor and I'm going to build it just like it, it should be professionally done. I was gonna really just going to throw this together but if you, if you watched the video before when doing the framing stuff I went, I went through and actually sanded all the mold lines out and it's a, a detailed frame already. So we're just going to keep up with that uh, all the way into the interior. The interior is going to be a full, uh, full filled interior. So, but, so, can anybody figure out what the background music is? Hmm, let's find out. The background music to this video is actually from 1983's The Wraith. Awesome little hot rod movie, but I hope you enjoyed it, guys. But I'm going to start doing the background music challenge every week. So stay tuned, guys. Like it, dislike it, share it all across Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Hey, I really appreciate it, guys. So take it easy. Thank y'all. Today we're we gonna be painting the ha <laughs> ha.